beautiful people welcome back to my channel I'm I a Colombo Australian woman living in Melbourne and I know that you were expecting the second part of my reading brush vlog but Taylor Swift launched a new whole new album in, during the weekend and look I'm not a massive Taylor Swift fan I do enjoy her music and I do enjoy her videos but this album oh I have listened to it in repeat the entire day, the entire night. It is so good. So I thought, hmm, I bet someone already created a book tag about the 16 songs that are included in this new album. And I was right. The vlogger a Whisper of Ink already created a book tag related to the songs. And that's what we are going to do today. The first song in the album is The One, which is my favorite. For this one, we have to find a book with an ending that left you speechless. And for that, I'm gonna pick Home Before Dark, which is the latest book of Riley Sager. It's just a page turner, it just keeps surprising it. And twist after twist after twist after twist, even in the last page, there is a twist. It was so good, really highly recommended. Second song is the album is called Cardigan. And for this one, we actually have a video. Oh, have you seen that video? So many Easter eggs. Oh. For that one, we need to pick a book that makes you feel happy and sad all at once. I have to pick another book that I recently read, which is uh, A Man Called Off by Frederick Bachman. Like the books is really funny, like the actual character of, he is funny. And the way he is, his personality, his grumpiness, it just makes me think about my dad, about my dad-in-law and all that. So I really enjoy that part. But at the same time, it's about a lonely, old, 70 year old guy that wants to die, but he cannot kill himself. Like he tries and tries and just, he can't. The fourth son is called The Last American Dynasty. And it's a book that is fascinating an extremely well told story. If I have to think about all the books that I read and the ones that really surprised me, like they were fascinating and I couldn't stop thinking about it or stop reading it, I have to say that was The Ark of the Scythe by Neil Shusterman, a fantasy trilogy. I read it a couple of months ago. I need to reread it soon because it, this universe is so, like, I haven't thought about it, like, it was so new to me. If you are, done, are not familiar with the trilogy, it's about this futuristic view of the world where people don't die anymore by natural causes. So there is this institution or this group of people called the Scythehood, who are the ones with the permission to kill because of course population grows if no one dies and people need to die because there is limited space on earth and it's all about how it will work if we actually are immune to all diseases how in that new advanced perfect world there is corruption and there are similar problems and social issues that we are experiencing now it was fascinating it was really good moving on to number did i say that was number four Sorry, that was number three. Number four is Exile, a book you wish you hadn't read. All right, so I'm very picky with what I read. And if I actually don't enjoy a book, I actually DNF it. I just put it aside and don't think about it anymore. But there is one book that I recently read. And I think this is a bit, a bit controversial because so many people say that it's amazing. I hated it. Everyone raves about this book but I just couldn't. It's Pretty Girls by Karen Slotha. Like, look, I like thrillers. I like criminal thrillers, police thrillers, like all type of thrillers I'm on board with it. But this book, it was so, not only violent, but gore and the imagery. It's so descriptive in the violence against women, children. Oh. It was awful. Seems like all her novels are quite explicit, quite graphic. I don't like that type of narrative. Number five is My Tears Ricochet, a book that made you cry uncontrollably. I know many people are gonna pick this book for this prom because I think this has been the novel that I have cried the most with and it's A Little Life by Hania Janiyahara. 
oh my god jude that ending uh that friendship the twist and the end uh, i just cry and cry it's such a deep sad story if you haven't read it very 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 top line it's not for everyone it's about a group of friends but mainly it's about jude one of the friends that has had a very difficult life really difficult life but the book is beautiful because it teaches you how friendships and even if you are alone in this world like you don't have family you will always find people that are gonna be there for you um, if you are a good person so stop with the sad and gory questions number six mirrorball a book that feels it was written just for you one book that when i read it it was very unique for me and it was like I was very passionate about it and I'm actually very passionate now about it it's an absolutely remarkable thing by Han Green his first novel that book was also similar to Scythe the story was so unique the story was about internet social media um, fake news going viral I felt identified by some of the things on saying that I had never gone viral I don't have many subscribers like I'm not even close to what's happening in that story but I do follow lots of youtubers that have gone through that from controversies um, manipulation and lies but also there is a good side of social media but not everyone gets to see it next one number seven which the name of the sun is seven a book that makes you feel nostalgic and for that, it's, I'm gonna pick Curtain by Agatha Christie. Curtain by Agatha Christie is the last book in the Poirot series. And it's nostalgic because this was, I think it was the second or third book of Agatha Christie that I read. And Agatha Christie was out of the first authors that I actually read more than once when I was a kid. So it has a special place in my heart. Then we move to number eight and it's August. A book that reminds you of summer. I went to my entire read list and I only found one book that reminds me of summer and it's The Unhoneymooners by Christina Loren because it's a honeymoon that takes place in Hawaii, beach, ocean, sun, it's perfect. I really enjoyed this book. I gave it I think 4.5 or 5 maybe. This couple that are getting married, they get really sick after the party because they everyone in the party in the wedding had food poisoning and the only two people that did not get food poisoning it was the sister of the bride and the brother of the groom those two go to the honeymoon because the, the actual couple cannot go but the thing is that they don't get along at all it's a hate to love story but but one that is very well done i felt like it wasn't one second i hate you and the other second i love you no, I, I felt like it was a very well done story. Moving on to number nine. The song is This Is Me Trying. <sighs> so beautiful. It's a book that deals with loneliness and sadness. And for this one, I picked one of my favorite books of all time, which is Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. This is about a family. I think it's a Chinese or Japanese family that lives in America and the parents are from there, but the kids, I think, the kids are born in America, so first generation America. The household has very strict rules and just the balance of the two cultures. On the first page of the book, you know that the daughter committed suicide. It's very powerful for people who are immigrants that have that duality at home. The previous culture and the previous traditions versus adapting, how, how to adapt to that new country, new culture, new rules, new standards, new values and all that. It's so good. It's number 10 and it's called Illicit Affairs and it's a book that gave you a book hangover. The book that has been in my mind since the day I read it is My Dad Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. It's a book about a teenager that at 14 years old she has an affair or she falls in love with her teacher. It's told in two, pers in two points in time when everything happens and you see how that relationship evolves and then 25 years later and there is another woman that has come out saying he groomed her and he abused her and all that and the reason why I keep thinking about it is because it explains how grooming works in the present the 25 years after Vanessa she actually doesn't think that that was grooming 
she thinks that they were in love and she thinks that she believes that um, that he didn't do anything wrong even though he was 15 years older than her it goes and explores that psychology of how grooming works and how it could be happening under your roof very impactful number 11 is invisible strain a book that came into your life at the exact right time and for this one i'm gonna pick a non-fiction and it's gonna be how to win friends and influence people by Dale Carnegie, I think is his name. Two and a half years ago, I switched jobs and this book has given me the elements and some tools to influence people, to raise and improve my profile during the company because it's a book about communication pretty much and it's so good. It has so many good advice and good tips and although the book is like 30, 40 years old, it still is completely valid, everything that he says. Is, is still true. 12. Oh, this song. I love this song. It's called Mad Woman. A female character that you adore. We go back to that nostalgic. I'm gonna pick Miss Marple from Agatha Christie because she is such a cool old lady. She's amazing. Cute and is smart and witty. She's funny. It's so cute and I wish I wish to have her as a grandma. Song number 13 is called Betty. The couple that you adore and makes you feel all the feelings. I have to pick Hazel and Augustus Waters from The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. Oh, that book. That book also made me cry a lot. Both of them, their relationship, their friendship, how they support each other in those hard times, how they were there and they were trying to make their few months like worth it. So it was, it was just beautiful and yeah, that ending though. Hmm. Number 14, Epiphany. It's a book that is haunting. And for this one, I actually don't read that much horror. I don't like horror. When I was in school, probably between 12 and 13 maybe, like I was pretty young, I read The Amityville Horror by Jay Anson and oh my god, I had nightmares. That was my first horror book. Well, if you don't count Goosebumps, but that, that doesn't count and I remember feeling scared for my life. All right, number 15 is called Peace. Pick a character that you will die for because you love them so much. That is a tough one because you have to give your life for someone. I wouldn't give my life for anyone but Dobby from Harry Potter. Dobby. I still cry every time that I watch that movie because Dobby is so sweet and kind and beautiful and helpful. And finally, Hoax. A book that you thought you were going to love, but you didn't. It's one book from one of my favorite authors, Leah Moriarty, Nine Perfect Strangers. Look, I love Leah Moriarty. I have loved almost all her books. Her books are always either a 5 or a 4.5. What Alice Forgot, Husband's Secrets, Big Little Lies, favorite of mine. But Nine Perfect Strangers, <sighs> I think I gave her a 3. It's just a it's not even a thrill. I don't know what it is. Sorry. But that was it. Those were the 16 songs in the new Taylor Swift album Folklore with the 16 prompts and the 16 answers in this Folklore book tag. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It would be great if you can also answer those questions down in the comments. If you feel like participating in this comment down below and also I'm gonna link the blog of the original creator for the tag in the description of this video and go and listen to folklore it's available in almost every single platform thank you so much for watching on see you soon